pastor, theologian, scholar, and regular Good Catholic contributor, Father Jeffrey Kirby, joins Good Catholic's Rachel Schrader on the Truth Be Bold podcast, a fearless, down-to-earth weekly discussion on the topics at the forefront of our Catholic life today. Greetings, friends. Welcome to the podcast, Truth Be Bold. I'm Father Jeffrey Kirby. My co-host, Rachel Schrader, is off today. I want to thank you for joining me. This is the podcast in which we dive into real issues facing real believers in the midst of a secular age. We try to address the social questions, the moral dilemmas, the situations we find ourselves in. If we're dealing with it, we want to address it here at Truth Be Bold. We want to see what does the gospel tell us? What does the church teach us? How can we understand the issues, the dilemmas, the situations of our day and age? So again, thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about the importance of Sunday Mass. Now, you would think that this would be one of the givens, right? But in a secular age, everything, even the most sacred of things, you know, there's this constant chipping away at the understanding of the sacredness, the importance, the inviolability of what is sacred. And that includes the Sunday Mass. So we have to address this. Friends, I want to stress, stress right from the beginning, I want to foot stomp this, that as human beings, we are made and designed hardwired for worship. Let me stress that again. We are hardwired for worship, which means if we're not worshiping God and worshiping Him, worshiping him on a regular basis, <laughs> we're going to worship something else, and oftentimes that means ourselves. We begin to indulge in self-worship. We worship money, we worship power, we worship influence. We worship ourselves, our pleasure, our satisfaction, our comfort, because we're hardwired for worship. We're going to worship something. And it's precisely to protect us from idolatry, and especially the worst of idolatry, self-worship, that God has mandated, taught us, called us, commanded us to regularly worship Him. And that's where the Sunday Mass comes in. Dear friends, the Sunday Mass is not an option. It's not, oh, well, we have some other plans, oh, it's going to be difficult, and all. Well, if it's difficult, then that's great. That means it's even a greater act of worship. So if we're on vacation... We still have to get the Mass. There's no vacation from the Sunday obligation. If there's a sports event and we're traveling or we're trying to watch a sports event with friends, or there, there's no dispensation from the Sunday Mass because of some sports interest or sports event. It doesn't happen. We are called to worship God. That is inviolable. And I hope that that would be as sacred and clearly understood in your own families. It is a powerful display of worship when a Catholic family, especially if they're with an extended family or other families that they're close with, then on vacation, the Catholic family gets up, cleans up, and goes to worship. Everybody else is still lounging at the beach house, and the Catholic portion or the good Catholic portion of the family is getting up and going to Mass. They're showing that worship is the heart of their life, their family life. It is the heart of what it means to be a human being. Now, again, worship is so important. First, because we're worshiping God. We're saying, you are sovereign. You are the one who is above all things. We praise you. We adore you. We thank you. And then by extension, when we worship God, especially when we worship him with that openness of heart, well, then God begins to order and structure all the different parts of our lives. So we're not going to worship ourselves. Because when we're worshiping God, we realize, oh, that's right. He's the one we're supposed to be worshiping, not me, right? When we find that battle with virtue, we're willing to die to ourselves and do what is right because we're not worshiping ourselves. When there's battle or debates in families or with loved ones, we're willing to apologize. We're willing to ask for mercy, even if we're not sure if we're actually the one that's at fault. But we're willing to do that because we know that the world doesn't revolve around us. You see, dear friends, once we start worshiping, everything becomes about us. Everything we expect to be around, to revolve around us. We start really beginning to believe that everyone else are simply means or pawns or instruments in order to serve us. It becomes very dangerous. It is the death of marriage. It is a disaster and the ultimate dysfunction in family life. It is the dissolution of society. When suddenly you have little sovereign selves running around, each of them thinking that they're minor gods, and that the whole world and the whole society is supposed to revolve around them. It is what Nietzsche, that great anti-theist, called the battle of the wills. And the problem with that is when there's a battle of the wills, 
the mightier always win. And the weaker, especially the physically weaker, are oftentimes victimized. That is not a healthy society. That's not a healthy family. That's not a healthy marriage. That's not how we're called to live as the children of God. But all this becomes possible when the worship of God is removed. Because again, we start worshiping ourselves. So we want to make sure we get to Sunday Mass. Sunday Mass is important. We get to Sunday Mass, we hear the Word of God. The church is teaching us by the selection of the Scriptures. Uh, we hear a homily. And I love what St. Augustine said. Uh, he said that a good listener never heard a bad homily. So if you're like, well, but the priest, the deacon, they don't preach very well. Well, a good listener has never heard a bad homily, right? So there's always something. God is speaking through this ordained minister in some form, right? With him or in spite of him, right? right? There's some message that's being given. So we hear the word of God. And then we're able to be a part of the Eucharistic sacrifice. And this is so important, dear friends. Sometimes people will say to me, well, I don't want to go to Mass because I can't receive Holy Communion. Now, Holy Communion is the preeminent participation in the Holy Sacrifice. Absolutely. And it's the means by which we receive sanctifying grace. That's the highest of graces. Sanctifying grace is also called deifying grace. But you know, even when we can't receive Holy Communion, when we just go to the Mass and we participate in the Holy Sacrifice, we receive what's called actual grace. So if someone's in a position where they can't receive Holy Communion, they have anger in their heart towards someone, or they're in a grave sin, or some situation that has, has precluded them from receiving Holy Communion, where do you think they're going to get the grace to repent, to reconcile? It's the actual grace that's given by the Holy Sacrifice. So even when someone cannot receive Holy Communion, they still are called to go to the Holy Mass, to be a part, as a baptized Christian, to be a part of the Holy Sacrifice, the representation of the Lord's one sacrifice offered once for all. So we still participate in the Holy Sacrifice. And then, of course, at the end, we receive the priest's blessing. So the Sunday Mass is very important. Numerous blessings. All, times, all types of graces are being offered to us. It's our encounter with God, our reminder that He is the Sovereign and the Lord of our lives. So Sunday Mass is so important. Now, as soon as I say that, some people will say, well, uh, <laughs> you know, you keep saying all this, but... When the pandemic hit, well, the bishops were pretty quick about, you know, suspending Sunday Mass. You know, okay, let's talk about that. Because I, I, I think that that did hurt us. I think it relativized our understanding of what it means to have an obligation to go to Sunday Mass. First, let me give you this clarification. When the bishops stopped the Masses, they stopped the public celebration of the masses. Right? So the vast majority of priests continued to celebrate mass. I was still celebrating mass every day for my parish, for the people of God, for the end of the pandemic. Right? Mass was still being offered. So the bishops didn't stop mass. Right? In fact, many of us jumped through hoops to provide live streaming so the faithful could participate in the daily Masses and certainly uh, the weekend Masses. So the faithful would know Masses are still being offered, right? But admittedly, the faithful could not be there. In some places, it was three months. Some places, it was five months. Some places, it was even, even almost a year where the faithful could not receive Holy Communion or receive it as easily or participate as easily. In which case, here's what the bishops did. The bishops offered a dispensation from Mass. Now, in some cases, it was a mandated dispensation, which means Mass wasn't even, public Mass wasn't even offered. It wasn't even a possibility. And the reason why the bishops did that was to protect the faithful from possible harm. Now, if we look at the history of the church, we've done this before. In fact, you can look at the Spanish flu in the early 20th century, and the bishops paused public Mass in order to protect the faithful. Now, the Spanish flu, that should be something that resonates with us as Catholics because we received a lot of saints from the Spanish flu. Two that are very dear to my heart are Blessed Jacinta, excuse me, Saint Jacinta and St. Francesco of Fatima. So the two little seers of Fatima, the two youngest ones, they died during the Spanish flu. In fact, you know, they didn't even receive their Holy Communion from human hands. Their Holy Communion was given to them by the angel of Portugal. And then they died before they were able to receive their Holy Communion from the priest. So... The Spanish flu, we look and we see that the church suspended public mass. So it wasn't like this was something earth-shattering or never been done before or so on. 
the church as both teacher and mother was seeking to protect the faithful. And so the church dispensed from the obligation for mass because of the public threat, the public health threat. All right, let's take this principle and extend it in a different way. Sometimes when we hear it on the macro level, the big picture, it's, ah, it can kind of sound a little fishy. Let's take it to the micro level, to, to our personal levels. If you're sick, like really sick, right? do you still have to go to Mass? Well, let's look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church. No. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says if you're sick, like seriously sick, then you're dispensed from Mass. If you're pregnant, especially in the last phases of pregnancy, right? you're dispensed from Mass. If you're the primary caregiver of someone who relies on you for immediate care, you're dispensed from Sunday Mass. Wait a minute, you might say. You just said that this was sacrosanct and this was untouchable. It is. But look how much the church, how much God values care. Our self-care in terms of our own well-being and the care that we give to others. A mother to her unborn child a caregiver to the one who's in immediate need. Look at this. So if we understand it in this level that there are exceptions, extraordinary exceptions, then suddenly we begin to realize that what the bishops did was they just raised it to the next level. So just like if I'm sick, I'm dispensed from mass. That's not just so that I can recover from health. That's also why. So I don't get everybody else sick. Right? So in the same way, the bishops just raised it to the next level and said we have a public health threat. It's immediate. I know there are big debates in terms of how immediate it was. I don't know if we'll ever get answers to those, but the bishops accepted a certain messaging, and they decided this is what we're going to do. And the intention, even if we will never know the true state of affairs, the intention was to protect the faithful from the public health threat, and that's why the decision was made. I suspect that we will continue to debate those decisions for the next several years. I would love for eventually there to be some type of ad hoc committee where we could discuss and, and, and debate what we did and what we could do better, especially, God forbid, if we should ever have another pandemic or situation like that. All right, I wanted to walk through that because, again, in many people's minds, it relativized things. Well, if the bishops can just say, you don't have to go to Mass for three months, well, then why should I have to you know, jump through hoops and, and, and causal type, types of problems for my family to try to get up and, and get to Mass on vacation, right? If they can do it, why can't we just do that? Well, we just walked through that and explained it. And if you're seriously ill or you're pregnant or you have these, you're a caregiver, then the church would say, actually, you're dispensed in those situations. Now, when we talk about the dispens dispensation from the obligation, I want to stress again, emphasize, that that's not a dispensation from the worship. Worship was still being offered, right? So the church can't say, okay, everyone, um, everywhere, worship is just going to be shut down. No worship is allowed. That's not what the church did. The worship was still being offered. It's just because of the public health threat, it wasn't being offered to the public, to the public celebration of the Mass. Okay, so with that understanding then, we can say, okay, there are some exceptions, but with all that said, and those are some very specific exceptions, right? We need to get back to understanding how important the Sunday Mass is. So as we see, okay, the Catholic mind has been weakened because of the pandemic in terms of the Mass obligation, we need to strengthen that mind. Right? That means those of us who especially care and love the faith, who we understand, those of us who understand how important the Mass is, we need to start really foot stomping and highlighting and giving example and witness to how important the Mass is. That yes, there was a time when it was paused because of a, of a, of a pandemic, but this is important. We need this. Friends, I, I don't think it's at all a coincidence that after those months and months in which the public Mass was suspended and so many could not participate in the celebration of the Mass, that right after that we had massive riots and violence on the street and kind of a return to barbarism. You can't suspend grace for a duration of time and think that there's not going to be chaos. So if we can see that in the national scene, we can look at that in our own lives. If we stop going to Mass, we try to justify not going to Mass because, well, it was paused during the pandemic. There are going to be consequences. First of all, our relationship with God, our relationship with ourselves. We start feeling strangers to ourselves. 
there's tension with the other people around us. We've talked about marriages and family, society. There's even a growing tension between creation. We start looking at the world as just a burden, right? Everything changes. Everything is turned wrong side down, right? When we're not receiving Holy Communion, when we're not participating worthily in worship. Right? We have to worship God. We have to make sure we get this right, put that focus where it is. Now, one thing that every once in a while people ask me about, they'll say, well, uh, what about that whole sick thing? Uh, how sick do you have to be? <laughs> how sick do you have to be to get out of Mass? And I don't even like when people use these terms, get out of Mass, or when they say get it, it out of the way. We had to really convert those those th that way of thinking, right? But people ask this, and I always tell people, imagine this, if I was handing out a million dollars, would you come? Would you find a way to come and get that million dollars? Right. And if you can honestly say, I would love a million dollars, but there's no way I could get out of this bed right now <laughs> and get there, okay, then you should stay home. Now, that's a rule of thumb, and take it, you know, as it needs to be applied, right? But my point is just don't, just because you have a cough or something, you know, that, <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to be careful. We can give ourselves all kinds of passes. So take it seriously. The dispensation's there when we're seriously not well. But be careful that we're not too comfortable with saying, I can't get the mass. Right? Also, one other thing that sometimes comes up, people say, well, but if I'm traveling and there's no mass available, all right, you should be in the Amazon or the Sahara, right? you know, because otherwise you can do research. And it's like, I couldn't get the mass. I was in New Jersey. Uh, there are Catholic churches in New Jersey, right? Or whatever, whatever state, right? You know? So no, sometimes you have to research ahead of time, but there are Catholic masses being offered. But if we are legitimately somewhere where a Catholic mass is not offered, then ob obviously the obligation is dispensed. Right? Sometimes people say, I go on these cruises and I'm going to miss Mass. I said, okay, have you ever checked and tried to go with a cruise liner that has a Catholic priest? Because there are chaplains on cruise liners, right? Is Mass so important to you that you want to make sure that you go on a cruise liner that has a Catholic priest and therefore will be offering Sunday Mass, right? So sometimes it's just going that extra mile. But if you're on a cruise liner and there's no Mass being offered, you're dispensed. Friend, Friends, I'm, I'm trying to give you some specifics. At the end of the day, I wanted to do this podcast episode just to highlight how important it is that we get back to Mass. And that we understand how important the Sunday Mass is. It can be hard at times because of state circumstances, state of affairs. Young families, I know it's a struggle to get all the kids ready and get to Mass. It can be a hassle. But whatever hassle there might be, it's worth it. We have to get back to Mass. Those of you who are still away from Mass, or those of you who are sporadic with your Mass attendance, let's work on that. Because the Mass, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, is the most important thing we do every week. On the Lord's Day, on Sunday, we go to Mass, we worship God. We remind ourselves, God is God, and I am not. Friends, thank you for joining me today. I hope these thoughts and wisdom have been helpful to you. I wish you all the best. May God bless you. Take care.